you back. We're also pleased to welcome in Tevi Troy, the president of the American Health Policy Institute, to talk more about Ebola. Tevi, as we say good Friday morning to you, we note that nurse Casey Hickox has defied the quarantine. Yesterday, she goes on a bicycle ride. All the cameras follow her. Tevi, in your opinion, should she be forced to follow the guidelines and self-quarantine remaining inside that home in Maine? Hey, GD, and uh, happy Halloween to you. Uh, look, she absolutely should, should self-quarantine, and she's being really irresponsible and, and I think, frankly, obnoxious. The, the, uh, the government does have quarantine powers, and they do need to reserve those powers for a time when it's really necessary. What she's doing is flouting the guidelines that she should be self-quarantining and putting the, the government in, in a difficult situation. And from a public health perspective, I don't believe that the crisis uh, of Ebola is at such a rate where we need to have enforced government quarantine at this point. I do think we do need to reserve that power and make sure that it's usable. And I also recognize the political situation where something like 80 to 90 percent of Americans think that we should be quarantining these people. So it does make a, a difficult situation for governors. I thought uh, what Governor LePage said was pretty spot on. Tevi, let's expand that. I mean, on one hand, you have this nurse who did something brave and selfless, obviously by trying to help those in Africa with Ebola. But on the other hand, she does something which a lot, a lot of people would deem as incredibly selfish by not following these quarantine orders. So how do these two square? I mean, where, do, where does the resolve come in here? Look, people are complex individuals, so I can applaud her going to Africa and trying to help Ebola patients. But uh, I must say that uh, I, uh, I deplore her behavior since she's been in the U.S. I, I think she, she's been uh, irresponsible and, and, and frankly just rude. So uh, I, I really think she should stay inside. She should do a 21-day self-monitoring regimen, which is what the CDC recommends and what Doctors Without Borders recommend. And she should uh, she should hold out for the 21 days and then go out and, and ride her bike all she wants. Tevi, as we understand it, the CDC has removed a poster or visual from its website that uh, said Ebola can be spread by sneezing just one day after the New York Post reported on those troubling findings. Is Ebola a lot more easily spread than we've been led to believe? Look, the fact of the matter is that Ebola is very highly contagious. It is contagious through the transfer of bodily fluids or direct contact with a person who has Ebola. Uh, those are the ways it's transmitted. You know, obviously there's some fluids in sneezing. I can't tell you exactly uh, what happens if somebody sneezes with Ebola, sneezes directly on somebody else. And, and I don't think anybody who says that they know definitively is correct, that you have a, a viral load in your body that is building once you're exposed to the disease. You become contagious once you are symptomatic. And there are, there's no black and white moment when you say, okay, now this person is completely symptomatic, whereas 30 seconds ago they weren't. So it's a complicated question. Tevi, do you think we need to adopt one federal policy for Ebola quarantines just across the board rather than having this state-by-state -state response? Well, actually, I am, I am a federalist. I, I do think that the, the states should handle this. And, and I think that overall, we do put too much on the federal government. And I think many aspects of crisis management should be devolved to the states. Uh, of course, uh, there are mechanisms in place that if the states are not handling things responsibly or need help, the, the federal government can step in. But overall, I would prefer to see this handled at a state-by-state -state basis. basis. E even with the notion of interstate travel, and, and this case of uh, Casey Hickox, who leaves New Jersey and heads for Maine, uh, you, you'd still rather see this devolve to the states. Well, yeah, I mean, in each state, you know, New Jersey addressed the issue and, and Maine addressed the issue. So, so I don't think that um, the fact that there is interstate travel means that uh, that federalism sh should go away. Uh, at the same time, I, I just have to say again how much I deplore her conduct. And I mean, she's almost taunting people uh, to, to put her in quarantine and enforce the quarantine. And again, that is a power that the government has, the power that the government should have for appropriate times. And, and she's asking them to use it, which I, I think is, is not necessary at this time and shouldn't be deployed unless we absolutely have to. Tevi, Dr. Gil Mobley, uh, the physician, emergency trauma physician, uh, was with us earlier. He's, he's tried to research Casey Hickok's background and thus far he cannot find where she is licensed by a state uh, as a registered nurse. 
with your knowledge of public health, is there a way for someone to be involved in health care without that RN beside their name uh, and be dispatched to, uh, to a place in West Africa? That is a really good question. And, uh, you know, obviously you have issues of people lying about their degrees all the time. And uh, it's up to the employer or the deploying organization to, to check things. I mean, obviously you, you take people at their word, but if there are reasons to check on somebody, you, you do. So uh, I don't know, and maybe there is one, but I don't know of some kind of vast database where you can plug in somebody's name and you can get an RN to pop up. Tevi, where is the Ebola czar in all this? Do you not think we need more involvement from him? Uh, it, it's a good question. On the one hand, the guy was criticized, Ron Klain, when, when he came in because he doesn't have a public health background and why is this guy doing it? And now that he's there and kind of behind the scenes, people are saying, well, wh where is he? Why isn't he doing more? Uh, we don't know much of what he's doing. I saw he was at one of the public White House events recently. I assume that he's, they, the White House said they brought him in for logistical reasons and that he's good at handling things within the bureaucracy and at bringing things directly to the president. So those are kind of behind the scenes things. I hope he is doing those things as appropriate. And I'd rather have someone like a Tony Fauci out there being the spokesperson because he knows public health and he knows the science of this much better than uh, Mr. Klain does. 45 seconds left. Tevi, you and I were both in government service. Now, to an extent, we're on the outside looking in. The Tevi Troy checklist, your top three priorities if you were in charge of this crisis. Yeah, no, number one is make sure that the different parts of the government are talking to each other and communicating appropriately. There's a lot of different roles here in terms of uh, the, the CDC has the scientific background and um, if it gets to a Department of Homeland Security has the logistical capabilities and obviously you've got the communications piece. Uh, second of all, make sure you get your messaging right. I think uh, President Obama's initial message about this isn't really a problem is uh, you know, what was a real issue and, and, and was not borne out by the facts. And the third thing is we need to step up our development capabilities so that we have countermeasures for not only all of them. And we, we hear you on that. We're running short on time. Tevi Troy, we thank you for your insights. America's Forum follows this Newsmax Now update.